Here's a Tektronix 485 scope. Got this one a while back at a ham fest. It's non working condition. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. Um, I'm going to power it up and see if I get anything out of it. Guy said it didn't work. Um, these are nice scopes. Believe it or not, this is a portable scope. Although not as portable as that one. But I really like these. I've got another one of these. And it's over there. And I had fixed that one a long time ago. And I couldn't believe it when I looked through my records here. But that one over there, I, <laughs> I fixed that one in 2008. Hard to believe. This one had a had a power supply problem I had a fix but anyway um, a lot of years went by I, I've uh, got to familiarize myself with the circuitry of this one here that one over there had a lot of problems the, let's see according to my notes channel 2 didn't trigger the fan motor malfunctioned it had a short in one of the power supplies and I believe I had a bad tantalum cap on that one too and that may be what's wrong with this one too I don't know I don't even know if it'll power up, but uh, we'll have to give it a chance here and see what we get. So that will be the next step. Getting into these is fairly easy. You've got uh, these bumpers on the back, so you can set it on its set it upside down. Remove four screws; they come off, and you have this plate here that's removed and then the unit slides forward like so but well, compared to the new scopes this doesn't seem so portable <laughs> there it is I read someplace a long time ago that tech came out with these uh, smaller scopes here because they needed a scope that you could fit under an airplane seat so um, that's an interesting story beautiful Tektronics construction and put attenuators under here a lot of these chips are in sockets um, and you've got transistors in sockets too. Sometimes you'll get what's called chip creep where components with time manage to actually migrate out of their sockets and cause trouble. It's kind of funny too the transistors that are in, uh, in sockets which I would think would be more trouble than not but then when you figure a lot of the guys that designed this probably started out with vacuum tubes so between that and the fact that early transistors weren't that reliable that's probably why they went with with sockets hopefully that's the cause of our problem that would be easy that the one the old one I had I fixed that one had a lot of problems with it bad parts in it so anyway now that we've got it under out of the out of the cover here, I'm going to see what we get. Before I do anything, I'm going to do a visual inspection here. See if I see anything that's smoked. Lots of tantalum caps. These are a problem with these units here. Um, Tektronix ran them up pretty close to their voltage rating and they have a tendency to go bad. Sometimes they'll actually short out which are easy to spot but I've had other units where they develop a leakage and they leak enough current where the um, power supply won't start up and it's got the uh, switching supply here one of the nice thing about these units they have these combs here you can pull to isolate different sections which makes troubleshooting a lot easier This hasn't been plugged up in a long time, so 
pretty safe to poke around in here. Here's those combs here. They pull right out of the, they call it a comb. I guess it looks like a comb, kind of. It's another possible source of problems. A lot of this stuff has not been manipulated in a long time. And sometimes just reseeding transistors or sockets, IC sockets, can make a big difference. Oh, it's beautiful construction. And yeah, it's got some of these specialized Tektronix parts here that if they go bad, it's good to have a spare. I do have a donor 485 down in the boneyard if I need parts. That's a pretty uh, complete shape here. Anyway, I haven't pulled any parts out of it yet. So, next thing will be to power this thing up and see what we get. Well, I noticed something here I don't remember. Look at this. This kind of looks like a bodge. They got, um... Oh, boy. That looks like trouble waiting to happen. Two transistors here that look like they were added <laughs> after the fact here. Um, I'll have to check my other scope. This just doesn't look... Doesn't look like it came out of the factory, but then who knows? These were made for quite a while. I'll have to check the serial number on this one against the other one. Well, let's see. I don't see anything out of order here. Boy, this has me a little concerned. This just not, does not look good to me. You know, a little oxide on these pins is all you need to throw the thing off here. Well, anyway, we'll see what we get. Okay, let's power it up and see what we get here well we got lights fans running that's good that's not good let's see here well that's really blooming in the camera there I can hardly see it okay let's try Horizontal position, if I don't get my arm in the way. Hmm, it's not working. Let's try putting a signal. Although I think I know, I think I know what it is. We've got a, we've got a horizontal problem here. Horizontal sweep. All right, I'm going to power it down. I'm going to check our voltages and see what we got here. Okay, on the sweep board here, there's a convenient place to check the voltages on here. They come up to this rail. I got a meter here. Here's the 50 volt. 49.85, that looks good. Plus 15. 14.92, that's within limits. Plus 5, 4.967, I'll take that. Negative 5, negative 4.9, that sounds good to me. And minus 15, minus 14.9, oh, there's minus 15, okay. Well, our supplies are good. So the problem, the problem's on the horizontal board, looks like. So uh, I'm going to look into that and see what we find next. Well, I found a bad transistor on the horizontal output board here. This is showing two diodes. This is not right. Um, I'm going to put it on the curve tracer and see what I get here. But this is the 
transistor Q1184 in the output of the horizontal amplifier we're losing losing the uh, horizontal signal so I'll have to try to find one of those transistors it's a PNP this might be kind of tough I don't know what the specs are I do have a uh, Tektronics parts list so I'll check that next and then go through my uh, inventory and see if I have an equivalent okay in the Tektronics manual here Q1184 is a 151-0270-00 PNP transistor etc but I don't have um, I don't have a uh, JETIC number equivalent but this is uh, the Sphere website they have a lot of parts for Tektronics and other equipment and I did find that part number here 151.02700 TO5 it's a 2N3495 unfortunately it's sold sold for four bucks I would have sent it for that but they don't have one so now I have to figure out if I have a an equivalent here so what I need is the data sheet and here's the data sheet 2N3495 it's got a collector base voltage of 120 of collector emitter a collector emitter voltage of 120 IC of 100 milliamps and um, yeah I don't know if I'll have one of these let's see here what's the beta well I'm gonna look through my supply and see I have any if not I may be able to steal one of these out of my donor unit I have down in the in the boneyard here so I'll check on that and be back well I couldn't find anything offhand that <clears throat> I'd want to put in here so I went down and I grabbed this out of my donor 485 so I'm gonna put that in try to put it here. There's one time it's nice to have sockets. No soldering. What do you know? That'll be a problem for later on, I guess. Okay. Well, we'll find out if that transistor's any good. Um, the unit this came out has been, <laughs> been sitting around for a long time, so uh, let's see. I'll plug it in and we'll see what we get. Hopefully, not smoke here. Ooh, that looks good. Well, we got our sweet back. I can hardly see this in the camera. Well, that's normal brightness to me and in the camera it's blooming that's okay I'll adjust it for the camera anyway we got our sweep back well it seems to be triggering okay well um I think it's working. You know, I really love this phosphor on the CRT. It's got the blue. I really like that over the green. The other one I have has a green phosphor on it. This is really pretty. I have a 7844 that has a similar phosphor on it. Let's see. One other problem, too, I see. Let's see. Is this... 50 ohm to 1 meg ohm. This doesn't seem to want to grab here. This one does. Yeah, this switch may be worn out. Every once in a while it grabs. Let's see if I can get it to 
stay in one meg anyway. Oh, this switch has a problem. Um, gee, I hate to pull that out of that other unit. I'm sure this thing is buried in there. No, it doesn't want to. Doesn't want to stay for some reason. Yeah, if I can get that switch fixed. Yeah, it doesn't catch. Anyway, I'm going to uh, see if I can get that switch fixed, and then this thing might be all right. Power supply is all check. Um, not too much more I can do with it here. Anyway, I'll see what I can do with that switch. Well, this one can't do everything that this one can do, but uh, maybe you agree with me, this one does it a lot prettier. I love that blue phosphor. Boy, that's nice. Anyway, I guess we're going to put this one, I don't know where, <laughs> we'll find a place, another orphan. So, thanks for watching, and catch you in the next one. Bye for now.